We'll begin with the latest on the ISIS front. The U.S. and coalition forces continued to attack ISIS terrorists in Syria overnight. They conducted six airstrikes using a mix of fighter jets and remotely piloted aircraft. In a separate operation, the U.S. also issued three airstrikes against ISIS in Iraq. But as the U.S. increases its strikes from the sky, we're learning that the service members are not on board with the idea of putting boots on the ground. According to a recent Military Times poll, 70 percent of active duty troops say they are opposed to the idea of sending substantial U.S. ground forces back into Iraq to fight Islamic State militants. To talk about that, along with the very latest, earlier I was joined by Iraq War veteran and RT contributor Jake DeLiberto from our London studio, and I first asked him if he was surprised to hear that staggering statistic. Well, one of the things I think that the statistic tells us is that the American forces have done 12 years of deployments now. Uh, they've seen an extensive amount of combat. And in generally, the, 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 the theme within the ranks is that they're starting to not want to be sent to another war that there is unlikely to have long-term success where some of the people that will end up being hurt or killed could potentially go in vain. Uh, on top of that, I think that there is a growing concern, especially from, uh, from veterans who have gotten out of the service, about what happens to them when, con when they come home. What happens to them after they've been injured or they have some sort of moral injury where they have PTSD and they're not getting able to care from the VA? This ongoing uh, problem is something that veterans back at home are concerned about, not wanting to go to war where someone may die in vain and where it's going to happen to them when they come home. How are they going to get their veteran services when, in fact, they're injured in both in emotionally, uh, psychologically or physically? Do you think there's a disconnect between what service members know about what war entails and what Obama administration officials do here in Washington? Well, there's a big difference in between the war on terror and what soldiers experience on the ground and then what happens in Washington. The main difference is, is that most of the members of Congress have not served in combat, have not gone to war, but that's the exception of Tulsi Gabbard and a few others. But on top of that, the uh, Washington policymakers don't really have anything at stake. They don't really have an, any risk in skin of the game. The only people that do have skin in the game are the few uh, congressmen who have military districts in their area. And they have big concerns about sending people in their district off to deployment after deployment after deployment. One of the key cases of that is Walter Jones. Walter Jones is one of the biggest opponents of sending troops to Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan. And it's because he serves over Camp Lejeune, in which uh, U.S. forces are one of the biggest military bases in the country. So most of them are removed from the war. They don't have any skin in the game unless, of course, they have troops in their districts. All right, well, we're just learning that former Defense Secretary Leon Panetta says he tried to persuade the president to leave some troops in Iraq after the former withdrawal in 2011, but Obama wanted the troops out. Of course, in his upcoming book, Panetta said, to this day, I believe that a small U.S. troop presence in Iraq could have effectively advised the Iraqi military on how to deal with al-Qaeda's resurgence and the sectarian violence that has engulfed the country. What's your take on that? Should troops have remained? Well, I, Leon Panetta's point here is he's trying to articulate a concern that many within the defense uh, policymaking apparatus were concerned about what would happen if the Maliki government didn't have long-term stability. But the reason that the troops weren't able to stay was because the United States was not able to secure the SOFA. They weren't able to secure the Status of Forces Agreement, and so troops weren't able to stay in perpetuity because of that, regardless of what the U.S. wanted or not, whether one uh, policymaker decided they wanted it or they didn't, we couldn't get the agreement with the Iraqi government. Now, whether or not troops on the ground could have uh, secured uh, Iraq and, and stabilized the problem, I think is a little bit far-fetched, because the problems that we face within the insurgency in Iraq and the problem that, problems that Iraq faced during the U.S. occupation was that the sectarian violence between the, the segmentary groups was basically inflamed because there wasn't running water, there wasn't government services, there wasn't a variety of different things. And having U.S. troops on the ground wouldn't solve those sectarian political differences on the ground. But that said, could the U.S. troops, could 10,000 or so U.S. troops acted as a policy uh, advisors or this sort of thing that, the, that Obama's trying to do now in Iraq? It's hard to say. It's hard to say because we don't know what kind of partner Maliki would have been 
had U.S. troops been there. We don't know what he, how he would have related to the Sunni. We don't know what Iran's, if maybe Iranian powers would have had more influence, putting, putting more weapons into the Shia militias. We also don't know what would have happened in Syria because the Syrian civil war emerged if in the light of uh, the U.S. troops being there. So it's hard, it's really hard for anybody to make any dis definitive, conclusive arguments about what would have happened. But one thing's for sure, that the U.S. invasion of Iraq created a lot of these problems, or at least at least contributed to them. And on top of that, when you look at the after effects of, of not having political solutions that stayed, the, the tensions domestically in Iraq increased and were exacerbated. You're certainly correct. There is a lot we don't know, a lot of hypotheticals. But let's just say President Obama heeded Panetta's advice. He left some military ground forces and decided not to pull out until, say, 2014 or 2016 and said, would that have really made much of a difference, considering, like you said, the sectarian divisions on the ground? Um, or, I mean, would we still be dealing with a militant Islamic opposition? Well. It's really hard to it's really hard to say. One thing we know for sure. One thing we know is that inside of Iraq, that sectarian sectarian divisions had been there for over a hundred years. And Saddam's Saddam Hussein's, uh, you know, very uh, you know, uh, benign and it's sort of pernicious uh, policy making inside of Iraq made a lot of the problems worse. U.S. troops being in the, and invading it and getting rid of the political situations during the occupation also contributed to it. So there's really, there's nothing we can definitively walk away from this and say, U.S. did this, U.S. didn't do this, or, or that whether U.S. troops would have been able to solve it, because we just simply don't know. But we do know that the dismantling of the Ba'athist Party created a lot of the problems, and that made the situation worse. And Jake, we're also learning the result of a recent U.N. report uh, that charts the staggering human rights abuses that ISIS is committing outside of execution executions. ISIS is apparently abducting women, using girls as sex slaves, etc. cetera, uh, horrific crimes. How do you think that is going to play into the American public's perception of U.S. military engagement? Clearly, ISIS is a problem. It's a problem for Syria. ISIS is a problem for Iraq. Uh, the, their propaganda war they're playing uh, is hugely influential. But right now, the, the bombing that's going on inside of Iraq and the, and the certain policies that are made by the UK and by the US are really uh, band-aid approaches to a gushing wound in the leg, uh, where we're trying to take a, you know, uh, basically, uh, you know, a cup of water to put out a bomb fire. I mean, it's really, it's really, uh, you know, lame attempts to fix the problem, the political problems that we face in Iraq, the political problems that we face in Syria. And unless, of course, there's long-term programs, international assistance, international efforts to root out the problem of ISIS, to get deepened down with the political settlements, and also, just one thing to note, some of the people that we're bombing, al-Nusra, for instance, is one of our biggest uh, uh, basically friends, if you will, that wants to take take out the Assad regime. So just because you're bombing one party doesn't mean that you're going to keep the other party your friend. And it's it's difficult for the United States and the UK to make long-term political uh, solutions to it, unless, of course, they deal with all these complexities, which we don't see that as a big uh, effort right now. Certainly a lot of complicated dynamics there on the ground. All right, Iraq war veteran and RT contributor Jake Diliberto, good to see you.